Congratulations to the new owner of this Gray Wolf here from Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And keep in mind as we go through this, while any viewer may find some benefit from this video, it is intended for the use of a specific individual with whom we have some previous knowledge. Um, if you have questions about the use and operation of this RV, remember that whenever you purchase an RV from Haywood RV, we're more than happy to go through it to this exact same extent with you personally. Normally, we prefer to show our customers around the operations of these RVs, take about an hour and do it face-to-face -face in person. Due to some scheduling conflicts, that just wasn't able to happen. And we didn't want to give our customers less service for the same money. So we thought outside the box a little bit. I grabbed my camera. And we're going to burn through this thing real fast to get a rough idea of the basic use function and operation of this RV. And then obviously, to the new owner, if you have additional questions, you're local, you are only a phone call away, or just stop by and say hi, we'll answer whatever you need. So short of that, enjoy! Now we're going to start right by the door, since that makes the most sense. Right when you walk in, it's the first thing you're going to see. We'll start with this object here, your fire extinguisher. Just like cough medicine, I hope you never, never need to use this. And here's the other thing. In the unlikely and extremely unfortunate event you do find a fire loose in your RV, don't try to be a hero. Don't try to like deal with it. Get out of the camper. Just get out first. This right here is an absolute last resort. If you've got, say, a grandbaby in this thing and you've got to fight this fire to save their life, that's the only purpose of this, and do the minimum job you can and get out of the camper, please. Okay. Right above that, something you're going to use a little more often in every single day is our command center and it does a bunch of different things for us it has our um you know tank meters and all kinds of good stuff on here and you can see how there's no water in your tanks now this right here says um you know flt fault what that means is if you try to uh activate the water heater it will go through like if you flip this switch the light will turn red kind of like that you see how the water pump light turned red that tells you that it's activated when it's backlit so if you flip the water heater switch it will try to turn on your water heater it will automatically ignite your propane water heater if it fails to light three times it will stop providing propane to that uh, appliance so that you don't accidentally hurt your family and this will light up and say there was a fault a water heater fault if that happens first thing to do is just shut the switch off Wait 30 seconds, try again. If it continues to fail, we need to see if maybe we just forgot to turn on the propane. We'll talk more about that outside. You've got all your different lights and everything, like you got your slide out lighting. And these are interesting kind of rocker switches. Like they always return back to their neutral position. And there's a reason for it. This panel has a hidden version of the LCI-1 control system. I don't suspect knowing you, it's something you're gonna be too uh, terribly interested in. But if you are, well, you can get you know, a smartphone, either an Android or iPhone, and there's a LCI One Control app you can download for free, and you can scan that little QR code, that thing looks like TV static, and it will basically make your phone talk to your camper. And pretty much anything you can do here, you could actually control off your phone. Now, awning extend, awning retract, pretty straightforward. What you want to do there, though, is when the awning rolls out and the fabric's coming down, there's like a flap that comes down. You want that flap to be straight up and down at the very end of the awning roll. And you can see that from here, thankfully. And if the awning is tilted when you're retracting it, don't worry, it'll sort itself out. You can't hurt it that way. Now, a neat note on your slides. It has like a time delay sensor on it because this type of slide system, you should only use it either all the way out or all the way in. And you wanna hold your finger on that slide button until it's done moving, because that runs it through an automatic adjustment cycle. For instance, if I just click the button, it doesn't do anything. But if I push it a second time quickly and hold it, you see that it starts to activate. They make sure you can't accidentally bump the button and throw the motors out of sync. We're gonna let her go out here. And right before, or right after it goes all the way out, you're gonna hear it kind of go a little bit. That's the automatic sync cycle. You're just gonna keep your finger on this button until it stops doing anything. Get ready to listen. Did you hear that last? That was, it's making sure that side of the slide and that side of the slide go out together. 
Now you've had a camper before. You know that a dinette can fold into a sleeper. This sofa can do the same thing. If you need some extra sleeping, it's actually very easy. You just basically pick up on it. And if you pick up on it a little bit more, it'll uh, go like past the point of no return and, and drop down. So let me back up a little bit. I don't want to miss anything. The, uh, you know, you've got all kinds of different lights and things in here. I hear a grown lady, you know how to operate lights. What is going to be a little bit different on this one compared to your last RV is uh, your um, oven down here. So the way that uh, you're going to do is don't cook on the glass. I know you're a smart lady. I know you would never do that. I'm kind of saying that for the benefit of other people watching this because it's shocking how many people have been cooking on the glass of those. That is a cover only. So you've got a sparker over here and it sparks all three of these burners at the same time. What you're gonna do, obviously making sure your propane's turned on first, you will turn this uh, you know, to the um, desired, you know, high, low, whatever you want, and just spark it like crazy. Remember, it sparks all three at the same time. But this is not sparking the oven. They do that for safety reasons. This uh, oven doesn't have like a, a automatic gas flow control. So way back there, you see that silver job, this thing? What you want to do is get one of those longer, like, barbecue grill lighters and have it back there near that, uh, that thing. Actually, I'm sorry, this is an updated version. That does have an automatic sparker. Oh, that's an update I wasn't even aware of was on this. So there you go. That's a better feature than what you even thought you were buying. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that works in the RV industry. However, what I can tell you is this oven won't start pumping gas into the oven until it detects spark. So you're going to put the oven on light mode. And you're going to keep that button pushed in with your right hand and then with your left hand you're going to twist that thing a whole bunch of times until it lights you're going to keep that pushed in on light mode and then slowly rotate it toward your desired temperature that's how you're going to use your oven there that's cool i didn't realize that update had made it into these now when you're traveling you want to make sure that those rubber grommets are really secured so the um glass top there isn't bouncing around now this refrigerator is different from what you're used to in your old camper, which had a uh, gas and electric passive absorption fridge. This is a 12 volt active compressor driven refrigerator. It doesn't have a gas and electric side. It is uh, only one type of power, but this is, a, it's just over 70% more cold storage than what you had before. And really, it's simple to use. You just have a temperature control here, low on this side, high on that side, that's it. And keep an eye on this thing. Once you get it set where you want it, you'll be fine. But we've actually seen the refrigerators of these things start to freeze people's milk. So I mean, they work really, really well. Down here is your converter box. In your house, you'd call it like your fuse panel. So these things over here control the 110 household power side of our camper. And let's say something was tripped. If you see one of the switches is out of place or if it's only like halfway thrown, push it all the way to the left, give it a second snap it back to the right and you're good this is all of our 12 volt stuff and what's kind of nice is they have it very clearly labeled and if something if a fuse is blown there will be a red light inside here on top of that green circuit panel basically so you know which fuse so you don't have to guess now while we're down here another safety item we have our carbon monoxide detector this thing feeds off the rv's um battery power unlike the smoke detector on the ceiling which has its own nine volt battery this gets its power from the RV itself. If the battery gets low, this is going to start squealing at you to say, hey, I can't keep you safe. Or over time, these things work off a filter and over time the filter wears out. So after a couple of years, and I can't tell you how long, it could be two years, it could be 10, depending on the air quality where you're camping, um, it might start to chirp for no reason. Well, uh, what all you do, it just unscrews, you uh, undo the two wires and come to our shop here at Halet RV and replace it. No sweat. Um, the uh, thing is, if it's in the middle of the night and you hear this thing squealing, just like the uh, fire extinguisher, step one, get out of the camper, okay? Get out of the camper, open the door, uh, make sure that everyone's safe, breathing fine, and then what you want to do is, uh, like, one person go in, open windows and fans and get back out of the camper as quickly as possible and let it air out for a little bit. Now, if it just chirps, if it's not constantly squealing, it probably means either low battery or needs replacement. Now, this RV has the Cherokee juice pack option on it, meaning your camper has its own built-in solar panel on the roof helping keep the battery charged up, which is really, really nice. That will be very useful. 
And that's what this is right here. This is basically, think of it like the fuel gauge in your car, but it's the fuel gauge for your battery on your camper. It's very neat. Um, you can also hard turn the power on and off, which I do recommend when you're going to be storing the RV long term. Over here, we have our electric space heating fireplace, which these things put out a lot of heat, man. You are going to be very happy with what you get out of this. Now, a couple different ways you can use it. It does come with a remote control, so uh, you don't have to get up and down and get on your hands and knees to activate it or anything like that. Although, if you notice, it does have a handy switch panel right here. Something else to keep in mind, there's... Uh, a, a hard power on off switch here. You gotta make sure this is turned on before the remote control is gonna do anything for you. Now you can use it for heat. You can use it just for LED visuals too without heat or you can obviously do both. As we work our way up here, you have your entertainment system. This is your stereo. It's AM, FM, it is Bluetooth. I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off here for a second. But it also has HDMI and USB plugs. Now this USB plug is only for power, but like if you have a Roku stick or someone wants to like plug their phone into it and charge their phone off it, they can do that. Should you choose to add a TV, that's where it would go. There's also a matching mount on the outside of the camper. And up top, there would be all of your TV hookups. I'm gonna do a quick pass here. I think we are pretty much good for now in the living room. Let me step up into the bedroom for you. Both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs. But over here, this set of USB plugs doesn't overtly look like USB plugs. They're still up here. But this is a mount for a speaker that you can purchase separately. It's a portable Bluetooth speaker. They're very, very nice. I actually do personally own one. And I'm, I was not originally a fan of them until I got my hands on one and I became a fan of them. But if you don't care about any of that because the RV's got its own built-in uh, stereo, just remember it's USB plugs and those are household plugs. Now remember, these operate off your battery these operate off your shore power. Extra lights in here, nothing fancy, nothing special. Uh, you've already bought the camper, so you already know that there's a big chunk of closet space over there. TV hookups in here, just like there is in the um, living room. And if I spin us around here, I do want to take a moment to show you the use and operation of your fire escape window. I really hope you never need to worry about this. See how it says exit down there. So what you're gonna do in the terrible event of a fire. Now remember you have a dedicated bedroom door on the opposite side of this camper. You don't have to go through this thing and there's a door over there, but you see this red knob, you're gonna grab that and you're gonna rip the screen out and you're gonna throw it out of your way. Then our little egress window here, I'm not left-handed. Oh, God bless it. There we go. We're gonna push that. Now there's a little lip right here. If you just want it for airflow, you can leave it just like this. But in the case of fire, you're going to shove it all the way out of there. You're gonna get it all the way out of the way. Now, the only easy way out of this thing is head first, and you're gonna flop down to the ground. But a jammed up shoulder is a lot better than third degree burns over 70% of your body. I sure hope you never, ever, ever have to worry about any of that, of course, though. Working our way back the other direction, where do we wanna begin? Um, air conditioner, there we go, we'll, we'll work from the top down here. So, most of the time, you're gonna have your AC going through your central vents. But if you just get to your campsite and you really wanna drop all the cold air right here, you can open that up and that will bypass your central air and drop all the cold air right here in your living room. Now you don't wanna do that long term, maybe half hour, hour at most, and then close that so you can run all the air back through your vents. If you leave that open all the time, it is possible you could freeze up your coil condenser and it will stop working for a little bit. Now, if you notice, there's these two little tabs and inside there, when you see it in person, there's a little foam filter. That's your air filter for your AC unit. Very simple. All you need to do every now and then, if it starts to look a little dusty, pull that filter down, bring it over here in the sink, wash it out carefully, let it dry nicely, put it back up, no big deal. Um, nine volt uh, powered, uh, battery powered fire alarm. That's pretty straightforward stuff. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with those from uh, being in your house. Test your battery every now and then. And if you're not sure, replace it you know it, it costs not a whole lot for a battery and it costs a whole lot for a new camper so that thing's worth it now your um uh, ther uh yeah thermostat over here it's all kind of touch operated it's got different modes on it you've got auto fan mode you've got cool and you've got uh heat now it, i one thing i wish it wouldn't do is give you a number because this doesn't work like a residential uh central air and heat system you're not going to get it to necessarily get to exactly the temperature that you're setting. Think of it as 
cooler and warmer and just set it accordingly. It is possible to sometimes push these buttons in a certain combination to turn on your uh, furnace and your air at the same time. Just cycle everything back to off and then go back through it slowly. Also, this is all because we're Americans. Um, it's all in Fahrenheit. If you push these two buttons at the same time, you will flip it to Celsius, push them again, and you'll flip back to Fahrenheit. That's uh, easily, like sometimes people bump, they go, I don't know what it did. Well, there, there's what you did. The bucket right here is all your handy, you know, hoses, cables, connectors. You've got your electric surge guard right there. And apologies, I've got that little bundle of rags. When I first walked in here, they had already cleaned your camper. And I had apparently uh, stepped in something wet uh, with one of my shoes and I left three or four footprints that I went through and scrubbed up. I wanted this to look nice and clean for you. Now these USB plugs, these black squares, those are just like the USB plugs in your bedroom. They do operate off your uh, battery power, which is really, really nice. Now in here in the uh, bathroom, nothing in here will work any differently from your old camper, but I do want to mention a few things. When you are uh, using your toilet, first thing you want to do is make sure there's a little water in there, which there's no water in there currently. The RV's not hooked up to a water source. You always want to make sure there's a little bit of water in it. Then, when you get ready to use it, what you're going to do is put your foot on that pedal halfway so that it starts to fill the water from about that much to about that much. Then do your business, and then hold your foot all the way down on that pedal and leave it there for, I don't know, about a five count afterwards, and then let go. You want to make sure you're providing plenty of water flush through that thing. Over here in the shower, kind of similar, well, it's gonna operate exactly the same way as your last camper, but set your hot cold water, your uh, desired temperature. You're gonna pull up on the little plunger to you know, spray everything through here. Now, ideally what you wanna do, get yourself just soaked up real quick and then hit the flow control button right here. It will always trickle a little bit of water. It has to do that so that you don't have too much pressure back up. And then open it back up to finish yourself off and shut everything down. The um, Another thing in here that is new and different for you is you don't actually have just a generic light switch on the wall. It is motion sensitive. That's what this guy is over here. Now, it is also lights itself, but when you walk in the room, this will see you. That's what this is right here, the motion sensor, and it will light up. Now, you can still individually control the ceiling light, but it is a slave to that thing. So if there's no motion in here. That light and that light will turn off. But if you want to use it in nightlight mode, you leave that off and that will just be a nice soft little nightlight. And against all the light colors here, it actually works very, very nicely. Uh, your big fan up here, very simple, easy to operate. It says right here, you've got fan on four speeds, fan off. The only thing you want to make sure you do is make sure you have the lid cranked open before you turn the fan on. Now that fan, that big fan right there can exhaust some serious airflow. And that's one of the reasons that this door is slotted. If you want to leave your breeze windows open, you can turn that fan on and it will suck hot air that's at the top of the camper out of the camper and bring some nice, cool, fresh air in to replace it. I think we're good. Let's step outside. First thing we see when we step outside is naturally the steps since you're stepping on them. Very simple. Basically, what you want to do is just always make sure that that top lip right there is below the door flange. And the way that you control that is with these little adjustment pegs on the legs down here. Um, you know, the legs can be different. Like one can be longer than the other. As long as the steps are flat and sturdy, you're good to go. Nothing special there. Now this RV has little tire pressure indicators. These little valve stem caps, they say 65 on them because these tires are rated for 65 PSI. Uh, that's what the camper's kind of tuned to. If you see that flip from green to red, just know that you need to put some air in the tires. And what's nice is that's about all the more complicated it is. Now we talked about how there's an outside TV mount. That's what this would be right here. You notice how the bedroom, the living room, and the outside TV mounts are all the exact same thing. And it does come with one of the little slot jobs that you can put in there. So if you do add a TV to this camper, you can move it around at your leisure. Your speakers uh, inside and outside are all connected to the exact same system. So if you are uh, playing music inside, it is playing outside unless you turn that speaker zone off. So just kind of remember that when you're watching that Arnold Schwarzenegger getting the chopper shoot him up late at night. You wanna make sure those are off so you're not blowing the neighbors away. Now these are also backlit. They light with the awning light, which is kind of cool. <coughs> Pardon me. The um, RV has a roof solar panel on it. 
which you don't really even need to worry about. It just does what it does. If you need a little bit more power for like you're gonna go off grid a long time, you wanna keep everything running, you can get a portable panel right there and uh, plug that in a Furion panel. We can get you those here at Halitz. Now, we, my understanding is transferred this hitch from your old camper. So you already know how to do all that, or at least somebody you know does, and um, that should be good to go. The uh, tongue jack, very simple, just power up down. It does have a handy little docking light on the bottom side here. In the daytime, you're not going to see too much of that. If you ever do run out of power though, you can pull this top tab open and the camper does come with like a, uh, a wrench bar thing that you can put in there and still manually crank that jack. Now, one thing I want to show you up here, your propane system. Your old camper obviously had propane bottles on it, but this one's a little different because it's a dual tank with an auto regulator. Um, it's got this handy little access port. And what you're really gonna enjoy on this one is you can just pop the top open and open, uh, uh, turn on your tanks. Now, if your propane appliances inside are not working, Step one, make sure you turn the propane on. And if they're still not working after that, light your stovetop burners and burn them really hard for about five minutes to bleed the air out of the lines. Now, it's harder to see from this angle, but if the, uh, and the camera's not wanting to focus where I want it to, let me see if I can get in here a little bit. There we go. Um, you see the green spot in there. <clears throat> That's a propane tank selector. There's a little knob on it where you can point it toward the tank you want to use. Now, let's say the left-hand tank is exhausted. The camper will automatically start using the right-hand tank, but that indicator will go red. So periodically, you want to peek your head in this little thing and check that. Um, all you need to do then is turn the selector knob to the good tank. This, the uh, indicator will go green, and then um, you're, you're good to go. You can swap that other tank and never have a break in service. Your water heater here uh, will be Actually, I think it'll be a little easier to operate than your last camper. It's still a propane water heater, but what's nice is it has itself an automatic ignition. We talked about that inside. That's what this wire is right here. It's the auto igniter. You don't have to uh, like worry about um, coming out with a match in the rain and lighting that. It'll do all of it itself. Now, before you light the water heater, one thing you want to do is you want to actually hit that little pressure control valve. You see how some water spurted out at me? This is the top of the water tank. That means that the water tank is full, meaning it is safe to go ahead and light that water heater. And if this thing's not quite working, the sparker, usually they work just fine, but every now and then you have to push these two things right here. And if you hear them go click, well, that means that they had to get reset for some reason, but now you're good. You did the reset. Kind of like when you reset the breakers in your house. All right, I'm not left-handed and I need two fingers to do that. <laughs> Park cable is going to hook up over here. We already talked about our tires. Um, over here, we've got our uh, electric cord connection. That's what's going to go in this guy right here. Be, feel free to be a little friendly with that, snapping it shut. Sometimes you got to thump it there, kind of like a, a guy that doesn't listen to you. When you're at a park and you have water hookup, this is what you're going to use. When you are not at a park and don't have water hookup, you're going to use your freshwater tank. You're going to use the hose to fill this up. There's a little thing right there where if you put too much water in it'll spurt back out at you. That's how you know it's full. Now this is a hot and cold utility shower, although it does the exact same thing as the, the shower inside. It's just outside and usually the neighbors don't like it when you shower out here. This is our black tank flush. So if you really need to pump some extra water through your, your toilet tank, get a separate hose. What I recommend, use a white hose for drinking water and then use a green hose for your black flush. Keep them separate. Don't use the same hose so you can avoid cross-contamination. Hook it up, let it flow. Make sure you have the black tank valve open if you're using the black tank flush. Otherwise, you could flood the tank and then flood bad news water up into your camper. Now, speaking of uh, dumping things, works exactly like your old camper, but I wanna make sure you know how to do it right. First thing you're gonna do, get your sewer hose and hook it up into the dump station. Then take the hose and set it over here then unscrew the cap. The reason I say that, if somebody had opened the black tank valve and then closed it and you weren't aware of it, you're gonna have about six inches of unfortunate bad news waiting for you. But that's not the end of the world. You might be able to quickly uh, hose cap it real quick and not have too much to worry about. Once everything is all hooked up, open your black tank, let it run, you'll see it kind of slunk down, then open your gray tank. And leave them, you want to leave your black tank open, then open your gray tank. Because your gray tank is basically soapy water. It's just from the sink in the shower, you know? So it'll help clean the hose out. Then leave everything open. 
hook up that black tank flush like I mentioned, and blast all the water right out of there. Um, the camper does have a backup camera prep mount up top between the clearance lights above the Gray Wolf graphic. Uh, if that is something you're interested in, come back and see us. We'll get you set up on that. And as a Halo customer, you get a parts discount on those. Uh, the spare tire does not need to come off the cargo rack to fold down. To fold it down, all you're going to do is just pull one pin on each side, fold it down, reinsert the pin to keep it locked in place. Nice place to keep some bikes chained up even when you're not at the campsite. Our experience has been if you put bikes on a bike rack on an RV that's even at a, station, uh, a stationary site, people tend not to mess with it. But if you just leave the bikes laying around, people seem to sometimes go for a little bit of a joyride. You know what I mean? And nobody likes that. So again, this is <clears throat> very base level, simple function and operation of your camper. I know that you're a seasoned RVer. I still wanted to give you an overview of this one because it does have more involved equipment than your last camper. And if you have any additional questions, ma'am, you give us a call, stop over and see us and we'll take care of you. Now, if you're just another viewer and you have specific questions on this camper, uh, remember, Anytime you purchase an RV here at Halid RV, we are happy to go through in, in great detail, far more than I even did here today, to show you how these things work. And that's what all, every one of these back here is sold and waiting to be picked up. We are a huge volume place and you can see that we have more of them getting ready to go out right there. So, if you like what you see and you wanna kinda of be part of the Halid family, give us a call, because folks, we do it all. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halid camping, everyone.